Before you turned on this tape, we asked you to think about the best and worst meetings that you've ever attended. Why? Because running meetings, handling team problem solving, is the very essence of good participative technique. Managers have got to know how to get their people together and orchestrate these meetings. You know, you're kind of like a symphony conductor. You're not expected to play the tuba and the flute. You're expected to make sure that the tuba and the flute play together. Well, most managers don't do that very well. We don't have any grounding in how to run a problem-solving team. I mean, think of all the meetings that you and I have attended. Think of all of, of the time in our young lives that were wasted in committee meetings. All the camels that were designed as horses by committees that never got anywhere. When I asked you to think about the worst meetings that you've ever attended, do you remember how long they lasted? One writer said once that he spent six hours at a three-hour opera. I wonder how many of you have spent hours at what should have been short meetings because they weren't organized, there was no focus to them, they weren't productive, they were just generally frustrating. You know, a lot of managers, knowing that they've got to pull their team together, really view the process with great dread. Will you watch out where you're going? What's the matter with you, anyway? Fred, take it easy. Did you see how she walked right in front of the car? The sign said walk. Well, she didn't have to walk so slowly. Maybe the baby carriage slowed her down. Uh, Fred, you're awful tense this morning. I'll bet he has one of his team meetings today. Now, how did you know that? Well, for one thing, you always wear that dark suit. I know exactly how Fred feels. I like working with my group gives the people a chance to get involved in the decisions. Heck, you know, that's the whole trouble right there. Letting people get involved in making decisions. You know that new service center I'm trying to get rolling? Well, I thought I'd get my team involved. Now, I know this service center is going to work because I've set up the same kind of thing in Continental. Well, I got my team together. So the objective is to create a cost-effective way to support these new accounts at the local level. Are we all clear about that? Good. Now, I think something along the lines of a regional service center would work. But I want to get your ideas before we go ahead. You know it would be helpful if everybody could get here on time? Okay, any comments? Well, it seems to me that another way to handle new accounts would be to simply add a service team to the existing sales offices. Come on, Sally, think about that for a second. Wouldn't that defeat the whole purpose of the reorganization? Besides, I'm not about to give up that much control to local sales managers. Sorry. Okay. Any other ideas? Nobody has anything to say. You people don't have any ideas. I mean, we're all in this together, right? Wrong, Fred. Let's be honest. You're the boss. They pay you to make the decisions. Uh, I mean, I'd be happy to give an opinion. Okay. If that's the way you feel about it, why don't I just tell you what I think? And by the way, I already ran this by Forbes, and he liked the basic concept. Now, here's how it works. I'm telling you, the whole thing was a complete waste of time. I could have sent them a memo. He should have sent a memo. That wasn't a participative manager at work. He was using preemptive overkill. I heard that expression once. A manager was complaining about the fact that his boss had arrived, and the boss suggested, in a participative kind of way, don't you think we should plant some grass out there and some bushes and trees outside of the building? And before the manager could respond, the boss said, but I think I should tell you that senior management has demanded that we plant grass and bushes and trees. And we've already bought 2,000 pounds of grass seed, and it's in your garage. Don't you think we should plant some grass out here? Now, contrast that kind of preemptive overkill to no management and no structure at all. Fred. How can you held the meeting at all if you knew what you wanted before you started? Uh, because I can't set it up all by myself. Uh, besides, everybody's so hot on this participation stuff, building teams and you know, all that. Half the time I feel like a referee at a bullfight. <laughs> you start letting people's feelings out and all they want to do is gore each yeah. other. I had this meeting last week. That's just what I would expect you to say. Your whole view is narrow. And I think you're narrow. 
And I think it's typical of you to use this meeting as a way of promoting a bunch of half-baked ideas that do nothing but promote your interests. Margaret's right. How come you always agree with her? I'm just so sick of listening to all of you argue with each oh, other. Oh, look, hold it, hold it. I want to know why he always agrees with That's her. That's it. Now, time out. I don't know what any of this has to do with our objectives. Let's face it, Cindy. This is the third time you've asked us to come up with recommendations for the new equipment. And we all know they'll never spend the money. So what's the point? The point is you've never been out there in the field like I have, and you simply don't understand how those people think. And you still think like a technician. <laughs> Margaret's right. No, there you go again. I ought to... I just can't seem to keep them focused on the problem. Ah, people are people. You let them participate, they complain. It's not their job. You don't let them participate, they complain that they're being left out. People. If it wasn't for people, this job would be a piece of cake. What those managers were doing was not managing. They were inflicting pain. They were inflicting pain on the people who work for them, and they were certainly inflicting pain on themselves. You know, sometimes no meeting is good meeting. You don't always have to hold meetings. But when the time is right, when you've got all of your ducks lined up, make sure before people ever show up that they have an agenda, that they know what kind of meeting it is, they know what the rules are going to be. You can't play basketball with people who don't know the rules. They've got to know, is this a problem-solving session? Is it an information-sharing session? Once they understand what you want to accomplish, use the skills that you already know. Try some LQC. Try listening and clarifying and questioning. And don't let clicks destroy the momentum of the group. Constantly summarize. And especially focus in on those points of agreement as you manage or move your group from one point to the point that you want to go to. And above all, before they leave the room, Make sure that you've assigned follow-up responsibilities so everybody knows what they're going to do between now and the next problem-solving session. Well, let's assume that those two managers have gotten some of this information, have had the course, and see how they turn their groups around by applying some of these basic techniques. Look, I'll be honest with you two. I've really had enough of your attacks on each other. Now, you don't have to like each other, but as long as you're part of this group and reporting to me, you're going to have to work together. So let's just stay focused on the issues, shall we? Okay, here's the situation. The $30,000 we requested was rejected. So what else is new? <laughs> but we were given half. Now, I know that's far less than what we need for the original proposal, but I think if we put our heads together, we can figure out what needs top priority and um, how we can at least use this money to solve some of our problems. You mean it's actually been approved? Half, that's right. That's great. Now, let's see what's needed most. What do we think about the new phones? Well, does anybody remember what the overall cost was? You see, I think if we uh, take a look at the line items, we might be able to get a better picture of what the choices are. Good idea. Why don't we do what Sam is suggesting and go over the original line items? By the way, everybody at headquarters was very impressed with the job you all did on this. They wanted to know who did what, and I was tempted to take all the credit, but I had to tell them the truth. Now, Sam, since you raised the question, why don't you run the cost down for us? Now, look, maybe I tried to shove too much down your throats at once. Nice image, Fred. <laughs> well, whether you know it or not, I built this company's customer service department out of nothing. And whatever we do, I want to keep it under my complete control. Now, to be truthful, I can't think of a better way to service these new accounts than a regional service center. It works, and I know it works. Now, what I need to know from you people is how to staff it, where we should locate it, and how long it'd take to get it rolling. I don't have all the answers. I need your input. Look, I'm not about to start making any blind promises, but I will listen to your ideas seriously. And if we come to an agreement on certain things, well, I'll back them as best I can. Okay, let's get to work. Sally, what about staffing? Well, is it just key installations and new accounts that we're talking about? Hmm, that's a good question. 
Well, what's the group think about that? Should we limit it to just that? Why not think bigger? Well, it's not thinking bigger that I'm concerned about. It's dealing with the logistics. Good, good. This is just the kind of discussion we need. Now, let's keep it rolling. Now, Sally's point concerns logistics. Why don't we try to nail that one down right now? Alan, you've had a lot of experience with this stuff. Um, what should we put at the top of the list? Stop tailgating that guy in front of you. No, I'm not that close. Not that close. I can read the serial number on his tires. <laughs> I know you have a meeting today, but what's the problem? Oh, listen to Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Hey, listen, Tim. You got it easy with that bunch of intellectuals you work with. <sighs> you probably read them poetry at your meetings. Fred, personality has nothing to do with it. Groups are groups. I've got the same problems and characters that anybody has to deal with. You know, there are some people who act the same in every meeting. Yeah, like they were sent in by central casting from that big personnel office in the sky. <laughs> Take this one guy I've got. He never agrees with anything, but what does he do? He sits there, never saying a word, shaking his head and rolling his eyes. Right, or how about this one? When you get to the critical point, he starts whispering in the corner and everything goes to pieces. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've had them all. Like the Joker who comes in late for every meeting. Sorry I'm late. Did I miss anything? Gotta run. Sorry. Let me know if I miss anything. And another one who always leaves early. I've got one staff member who never says a word. And another who acts like he's running a filibuster. Well, on the other hand, if you ask me, I think the real problem is with scheduling. But of course, we shouldn't ignore the problems with inventories. Which reminds me of the time I was at this meeting in Connecticut, and this fella said to me... Then there's the one who says the same thing over and over. The issue is cost. I think the real issue is cost. You know, we should focus more on cost. Did I mention cost? <laughs> and the worst of all is the one who has to let everyone else know that he knows more than everyone else. The most difficult problem that I've seen in my 10 years of service, and I might add that this was the subject of my graduate dissertation, which received rather favorable attention from some of the best thinkers in our industry. Yeah, well, I've had them all. You left one out, Fred. Now, what Fred was really trying to say, I mean, I know where Fred's really coming from. Right. The one that always has to tell you what other people mean and never has an opinion of their own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another enlightening journey to work. I'll stay. Oh, but in all your talk about meetings, there's uh, one thing you forgot. Yeah? What's that? Last month's gas and toll money. Come on, <laughs> fork it over. Uh, no check this time, Tim. <laughs> 